Okay, this is my follow-up to the uh, Scout Combat Team video that I put out. Uh, I'm going to put them out, both out together so you'll see them both uh, coming online. And what they are, I have to explain something to you. The whole concept of a Scout Combat Team is not to engage an enemy. It is to be able to bring maximum firepower to an engagement if you have to. But what you're looking at is for your guys to go out, uh, find a threat, find a problem, uh, and to keep track of your environment outside of your AO. These guys are basically uh, your paramilitary intelligence. They're your scouts in the field who are going to go in, observe and report. That's their job, observe and report, not to engage the enemy. Uh, they might be situations where, you know, the team leader might say, you know, these guys look cool, they look like civilians, they look like refugees, they look like they're displaced. Uh, I'm gonna go in and talk to them. But he's going to do so with someone watching his six, protecting him, uh, covering his back from a distance. And, you know, uh, he might go in, might find out information, might find out these people are fine, might find out they're traitors, uh, might find out they're refugees, might find that they've bugged out from another position, uh, might find out there's something going on down range is headed your way that you need to know about. But their job is not to go out and fight the hordes of gangbangers and uh, mutant biker zombies and all the other things that uh, people assume that are going to be the glorified uh, G.I. Joe battle-ready uh, type of thing for a without rule of law scenario. In fact, uh, to be honest with you, you really don't want this to happen. And if it does happen, you're really uh, going to want to batten down your hatches, secure your A.O., set up a, a defense SOP, uh, get your people who aren't trained, trained up in basic skills, things like bounding, react to contact, uh, stuff like that, before you even start trying to organize any sort of scout combat team. And even then, uh, especially then, you're going to want to uh, take your people and you're going to want to send your best people out into the field. You don't want trigger happy gun nuts. You don't want uh, someone trying to prove their manhood. Uh, you want people with training. You want people with discipline, especially self discipline. You want people who can keep their heads under pressure. And you want people who know what the hell they're doing uh, prior military, law enforcement, things like that. Uh, this is very basic. Uh, it combines uh, U.S. Army fire team and uh, platoon SOPs, so you're filling a lot of gaps. I use the term sniper really loosely because uh, this guy's going to be performing uh, a lot of the same jobs as a designated marksman as far as being able to uh, bridge the gap between uh, or bridge the gap beyond 300 to 600 meters uh, from the rest of his team, but at the same time. He's also going to be providing overwatch protection, and he's going to be that initial scout for the, the uh, team to be the first one in, because if he comes in and he's looking at something from, say, you know, uh, 400 yards away, and somebody sees him and decides, hey, I have a bolt action Smith & Wesson, but it's not, you know, I haven't trained with it, but I think I can play a sniper because it's shit hits the fan, and this guy's got a gun. He's up on a hill, so uh, he might engage me, and I'm, I am I want to try and be, you know, Johnny Bravo, and they take a couple pot shots at him, he can pull away. If it comes in accurate enough to almost hit him, uh, if he needs to, he can put a round in that guy with a rifle to make sure the next round doesn't hit him, and then peel away. Uh, this is one of those things that is a basic theoretical concept. It's never been proven. It's never been disproven. It's uh, based on my own experiences in the military, uh, some experiences that a friend of mine has had uh, when he was with the 75th Rangers. It is a basic uh, concept of combining various SOPs. And if you're actually talking about going in and playing, you know, uh, Billy badass, let's go engage the enemy type of thing. You need to refer to U.S. Army Field Manual 7-8. Uh, I'm not even sure what the Marine Corps' uh, manual on this is. But you have to bear in mind. And, and for all these people are thinking, yeah, small teams warfare, small four-man team. Dude, this ain't Medal of Honor. Uh, in fact, the U.S. Army bases their training off of, or bases their uh, engagement principles off of small teams warfare. But you got to bear in mind, their small team's warfare is uh, starts off at a squad level 
to where a four-man fire team is laying down massive amounts of fire onto one position and another four-man fire team is going to flank that position and there's a team leader to coordinate things between the two team leaders so you're talking about nine people uh, sometimes as far as uh, 11, 12 if you have a medic and a designated marksman uh, probably two designated marksmen so we're talking about you know 12 to 13 guys in, an, in a squad to go in and engage an enemy and 12 to 13 guys engaging an enemy yeah that might sound uh, you know like a big thing for people who have a very small group of people to prepare with as preppers but you know uh, numbers count for something and even with a lot of ammo a lot of firepower which the American army is known for using shock and all uh, that's you know that nine man that nine to thirteen man team uh, or squad is going to be uh, very small when engaging the target and it's going to uh, it, I mean like I said it's it, it's a, it's a very small thing engaging the target and part of the reason that it is so small is because of the massive amounts of firepower the uh, evolution of weaponry uh, light machine guns and stuff like that uh, you know they didn't have this stuff back in World War II when people were engaged in trench warfare and shooting at long distance with high powered rifles uh, and people were shooting at long distance with high powered rifles because they didn't have this type of technological advancement as the technology advanced and uh, changed and adapted to the situation there started becoming a lot more things that made it a lot more applicable to smaller groups of people to engage with a lot more firepower uh, the whole idea of this is to have a balanced team of people who can engage fully at close range uh, you know uh, three quarters of which at medium range and have at least one guy who can put bullets in the bodies at long range and long range counts as anything between uh, 300 and 800 meters and if you have a guy who you know can make those shots uh, was military trained uh, was an expert with a rifle he can fill that gap uh, most sniper engagements historically recorded uh, between military snipers ha or most sniper engagements used by military snipers uh, don't occur uh, outside of usually it's within 600 meters of a target and the most and the maximum effective range of most sniper rifles according to the military manuals is about 800 meters so these you know thousand uh, 1200 meter uh, shots that you hear about are usually done with anti-material uh, 50 caliber rifles that are designed to take out uh, lightly armored vehicles equipment stuff like that so uh, basically that covers my point this isn't about combat it's about finding the enemy uh, or finding the problem, avoid reporting the problem, and hopefully avoiding the problem. If you have to engage an enemy element, if you have to engage someone attacking you, then you can do so with the maximum amount of firepower and get away. Uh, you don't want to play around with uh, trying to, you know, send out a two-man uh, scout team that can only engage at medium range or only engage at long range or isn't really equipped to do much outside of uh, whatever and you know you're playing your ideas off of videos like ultimate sniper or uh, you know uh, trying to go with basic things that are in the manual and not looking at who's there and what they have to offer and the new the adapting to the new environment you have to adapt and overcome it doesn't matter if you're without rule of law with rule of law uh, you have to adapt to whatever your situation is and overcome that's what preparation is about after all that's why we are preppers to adapt and overcome the foreseeable problems in the future